All right, let's see what making the case for Larry Bird as the greatest player of all time is talking about. Boy, yeah. mm. let's get it. When it comes to basketball, Larry Bird Ooh, is the smartest, clutchest player to oh. ever play the game. Smartest, clutchest. If you clutchest. don't think that Larry Bird is the greatest basketball player of all time, you probably hate that I just said that. Smartest the and clutchest. The smartest and clutchest that reminds me of somebody I know. Ed sport cliches that surely impact the game, but are impossible to empirically measure. Normally, I'd agree Smart with you, but I think that when you talk about Larry Bird, you see those intangibles become real, palpable results. Bro, them intangibles are so different, boy. It. When Larry Bird was drafted by the Boston Celtics in 1978, the NBA needed saving. Attendance was in the toilet, the league had few marketable stars, cocaine addiction had several players oh in its God. grasp, and most damning of all, playoff games were being tape delayed. Playoff Trash. games at the highest level of basketball were being put in the back seat for black and white movies and network reruns. <laughs> but rather than join the Celtics after being taken third overall, Larry Bird decided to return for his final year at Indiana State, a decision that would prove to be one of the most important in the history oh of the sport. Oh my God, look at you looking Bird's stupid. final year saw the Sycamores tear through college basketball, going 33-0 before the national championship game. Bird, already claimed by the NBA's most historic and prestigious franchise, had established himself as the generational talent who would inherit the mantle of pro basketball. Bro, I, I just see so many similarities. The smartest, most clutch player, of course, I'm talking about Luca, And he's going to carry the mantle. Dudes is going out the door. Luca finna had the next 15 years. That's all I'm going to say. Next Indiana 15 State's years. opponent Done. in the national championship was Michigan State, captained by the immortal Irvin Magic Johnson. Oh the God, Sycamores lost the championship to the more talented Spartans in the highest rated game in the history of basketball at any level still to this day. Wow, for real? The stage had been set. How many people the was looking at that? The next decade of basketball would be defined by the rivalry between the white mm, hit from French Lick and his Boston Celtics and the black magic and his Showtime Lakers. Ooh, the rivalry between Bird and Johnson is entwined into the fabric of the NBA and is worthy of a hundred documentaries. In this video, though, we're going to be looking at Bird's claim of supremacy. Here's Bird's basketball resume. His three championships come with perhaps the highest collective degree of difficulty of any player's championships. Three titles, three regular season MPP. Then he went back to back to back. Or was that or was that three different years? I don't know, but three MVPs, two Finals MVPs, twelve All Star selections, ten All NBA teams. Nine times first team, one time second team. Dudes really be sleeping on Larry Bird like he not it, bro. They really be sleeping on Larry Bird like he, like he not it, bro. They were sleeping on Luka too like he not top five. Like, come on, bro. That man is props. Oops. His three MVPs came consecutively, making him only the I knew third it. player to accomplish the feat, along with Bill Russell and Will Chamberlain. You know how His hard it is to win back to back to back MVPs? He was absolutely the best player on the 81 Sheesh. Celtics, but he was only a sophomore, and his 15 points per game in the finals gave the media an excuse to exact a little vengeance on a legendarily difficult interview. His all-star and first-team selections also come with the caveat that Bird only played for 13 seasons and missed all but six games of the 89 season following surgeries on... He played for 13 seasons and was an all-star 12 times? Bro, this is craziness. I didn't even know that. Both feet. I'm finna learn something. I can something hear you that. already. A 13-year career, and this guy is supposed to be the GOAT? What color Bruh. of paint are you huffing, Clayton? Bro, that's all you need. Green, obviously. But hear me out. Yeah, Bird's career lasted about two thirds as long as it should have. But what he did in that time was so impressive and so substantial that every basketball fan acknowledges that he's in the oh conversation God, as the greatest ever. Doesn't Ooh. it matter that those 13 years saved professional basketball, delivered a disproportionate amount of memorable moments, defined the golden age of the league, and produced a career by oh, which not all the other forwards before or since are measured? Bird He's like a point forward every type drop too. of talent out in those 13 years and made it seem more like 30. He didn't just leave his fingerprints Dang. on the game. He left so much of his DNA in the sport that it needed a Give cigarette those. afterwards. Thank you. There's something to be said about the candle that lasts half as long but burns twice as bright. Oh those my god, drop the off. Stack up with any other run by any other player. I will put an A-plus Larry Bird season up against anyone's. What does an A-plus Larry Bird season look like? 
A full box score, a blowout win, a nearly undefeated record at home, and a play style that could only be described one way, white. Larry <laughs> Bird isn't just a white basketball <laughs> player, he's the white basketball player. To describe Larry Bird's game is to thumb through the hoops dictionary and pick out every cliche about white players. Shooter. Unathletic, great shooter, good fundamentals, the whole thing. The archetype of a white Can basketball pass. player is Larry Bird, with one exception. He had an unparalleled understanding of the game of basketball, both as a physical contest and as a mental competition. Mm. His basketball IQ infected everything he did and catapulted his career into legend. You would Bird be talking about the white dude player. talking about his Jerry IQ. Jerry West called him nearly as perfect as you can get. He was the league's first great marksman. He could contort his body to shoot from anywhere on the court, regardless of the level oh my of defense. God. He That's what Luca needed. He, he needs to improve it. And was the founding member of the 50-40-90 club. At 6'9", Bird's understanding of angles and one? coordination led to a higher rebounding average than Patrick. That 50-40-90 is hard, but it's crazy. Kyrie just did that this year. He just did that. That's last year, too. 50-40-90. 50% from the floor, 40% for three, 90% from the free throw line. I don't think Luke ever going to do that. His free throw shot broken for some reason. Patrick Ewing. And it made him an impressively adept finisher in his younger years. Oh, yes, sir. 86, Bird dropped 47 points on the Blazers, playing the majority of the game left-handed. His knows? lack of quick lateral movement meant that Bird didn't do much when it came to slapping the floor and picking up the opposing point guard, but his size and omniscience gave him the ability to body similarly sized players, read defenses like a free safety, and pick off passing lanes with ease. Ooh, his passing was okay. transcendent, and I'll That's, highlight it later. It's and something different. You, need to you ain't gotta you ain't gotta sit in the chair, you know what I'm saying, slide your feet, you know what I'm saying, on these point guards too fast. Let all let all them other dudes handle all that shiftiness. I'm gonna sit in this paint. You know what I'm saying? When you come here, I'm just going to slap it away and get a board. That's it. Know that Larry Bird was a tough M effort. He had a superhuman motor and dove for loose balls like a beagle at the park. He was a willing participant in his share of fights, ah, often precipitated by somebody. his league-renowned trash talk. Ooh! I told Robert Reedy the other state that he should have stayed in preaching. <laughs> that was funny. He had 50 points. I was guarding in my rookie year. He looked at me and he goes, you can't stop me. And I looked at him and I said, gosh, boy, you're, you're so confident. He proceeded to score like 10 straight points on me. The coach took me out the game. He walks by and he's laughing at me. <laughs> he was a basketball genius. He'd be a step ahead, uh, a thought ahead, uh, play the game like a chess game. I'd much rather guard Michael Jordan than Larry Bird because you have to play the game as a thinker when you're playing him. You have to get inside his mind. That's probably the highest compliment anybody has ever given anybody on the basketball court. You rather play against Michael Jordan because he gonna come at you. He just gonna be like, uh-uh, square up, one v one. What's up? You know what I'm saying? You you're not gonna beat Jordan one v one, but five on five. You know what I'm saying? You got Larry Bird. It's like, oh wait, what are you gonna do? Is he gonna shoot? He's gonna pass? What is he gonna do? He gonna, he how you looking confused out here, man? Okay, okay. If you put all of us in a room, you know, magic. Jordan, myself, and Bird. Bird probably be the guy who walks out of the room at the end of the day. That's crazy. Did you notice something during those testimonies? Oh, nah, well, those well, Isaiah Thomas, you know, he a, he a Jordan hater, so you can't really, you know, say, take that with a grain of salt. They're some of the best basketball players of all time, and they all sing Bird's praises like they were former assassins who had to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with John Wick, and they're just happy to be alive. Bird <laughs> excelled during one of the most talent-rich periods in league history. The abridged list of his basketball rivals goes like this. Dr. J and Moses Malone on the Philadelphia 76ers. Moses, shout Sidney out to the Moncrief bird. on the Milwaukee Bucks. Isaiah Thomas, Bill Lambeer and the Bad Boy Pistons. Dominique Wilkins on the Atlanta Hawks. Those Bernard King on the New York Knicks. Michael Jordan on the Chicago Bulls. Hakeem Olajuwon and Ralph Sampson on the Houston Rockets. That's a dynamic And of dual, course, Magic seen. Johnson, James Worthy, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on the Los three? Angeles Lakers. <laughs> All right, there's no point avoiding it any longer. We have to look at Magic versus Larry. If you have Magic over Larry, it's because he has five rings to Larry's three, had a peak that lasted about two or three years longer than Larry's, mm -hmm. and had a two and one record against Bird Celtics in the finals. Perfectly legitimate, completely respectable arguments. Okay, But in okay. the interest of making Bird's case, allow me to retort. For nearly the entire decade of the 1980s, the Eastern Conference was irrefutably the more competitive conference between the two. Ooh. Considering the competition, for Bird to have made five finals appearances is just as impressive as Magic's nine. As for the head-to-head -head record Ooh. responsible for Magic's two extra titles, he had more help. 
Seriously, the Ooh. Celtics big three and the Lakers big three get compared all the time historically. He said it's different. Okay, so who Larry had? I don't saying. I, that's why I said uh, the Lakers, that, that was the first big three, for real, for real. Because they had, you know what I'm saying, three all-time, all-time, all-time dudes that can go. And they play, you know what I'm saying, different positions. Who Bird had? Robert Parrish? Kevin McHale? I don't know. I don't know as if they were of equal caliber, but weren't Magic's accomplices just a step above birds? No disrespect at all to Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish. That's what I'm saying. You don't look at Robert Parrish and like, oh yeah, he was that dude. You, you look at him like that because he was on the team with Larry Bird. And you know what I'm saying? The team success and stuff like that. You Kevin McHale, it's like, ah, yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, but. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Robert Parrish. But Kareem was the alpha dog on the 71 exactly. bucks and was the best player for at least two of the Lakers. It's like he got titles. three good players, but it's not a big three. James Worthy was the number one pick out of UNC after winning a championship hey, as the pick. best player on a team that had Michael Jordan on it. Sheesh. Throw in the fact That's that tough. Magic got to be coached by Pat Riley, one of the most brilliant minds in basketball history, and you could say that the Magic Bird argument comes down to one thing. Luck. Championship. So if luck? the careers come down to luck, the question just becomes who you would rather take. Now, I'm not making this video to tell you why you Ooh, shouldn't take Magic. Gosh. I'm making this video to tell you why you should take Bird. Not just over Magic, but over everybody. <laughs> One thing that helps him is the fact here. that his play would translate perfectly into the league today. A six foot nine sharp shooting forward with eyes in the back of his head who averaged double digit rebounds in an era against Moses and Lambeer. That is gobble tough. up boards as a power forward. He'd be an offensive mismatch against everybody as a small ball center, and his off-ball skills and passing would pair perfectly with the flow of today's game. Add in his Luca 2.0 competitive mania and three generations. He may, I mean, Luca is Larry Bird 2.0. That's what I meant to say. Medical advancements, and we're talking about a player who could have stuck around so long they would have had to rename the league. As you've been watching these clips of Bird, oh I would hope that God. you would notice something. He always knows where everybody is. Ooh. Watching Bird play basketball is like watching those monsters from a quiet place that know where you are if you make any noise at all. Oh, Bird yeah, had did. a level of clairvoyance that bordered on the unnatural. In 85, he ended up one steal away from a quadruple double after playing just the first three quarters. His passing what? was famously infectious and helped transform the Celtics of the 80s into an ideal that basketball teams at all levels are still shown tape of. Damn, they moved the ball double? with precision and Three intent, quarters? always looking for better shots and determined to get the entire team involved in the effort. That fact is almost entirely attributable to Bird and his wizardry with the ball. This acumen also helped Bird become the only player with a GOAT claim to transition successfully into other basketball roles after his playing career. In his three years as the head coach of the Pacers, Bird won a Coach of the Year award, really? coached the Pacers to their first and only finals appearance, and gave Michael Jordan as much trouble as he'd ever gotten in his career in the 98 Eastern Conference Finals. Oh, Game 7 only won by 5? Indiana. Game 7 won by 5? What year was that? I thought Jordan ain't do game sevens out here. Gotten in his career in the 98 Eastern Conference Finals. 98? After moving oh, into a front year. office role for Indiana, he won Executive of the Year in 2012, becoming the only person to have an MVP, Coach of the Year, and Executive of the Year award. On the court or off of it, inside and out, Larry Bird sees basketball as only he can. That intelligence ah. also lent itself to Bird's defining skill, making the big plays. Remember, NBA players get paid to win games. James Harden is getting paid nearly $40 million this year because he's supposed to help the Rockets win games. The Victory Rockets. Victory can be achieved in a lot of ways, and the win column doesn't care how it happens. As Mark Sinclair once said, It don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. Nah, that's when your what I'm team talking about. Is down one in a crucial playoff. This is, this is the part of the game that a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, they don't quite understand. When somebody, when the chips are down, whatever that means, you know what I'm saying? You got the ball. Who who are you confident in who's not going to be rattled, who's going to make the play, hit the shot as well? It's just way more important. Hit the shot. Playoff game with Stop eight playing. seconds left, and you need to hit a shot to stay like, in the, the series shot. and keep your season alive. That's where players really separate themselves and earn their money. Love it or hate it, it's the players that come through in the big moments that live forever in our memories. Those big moments, man, they just they just they just mean more than the whole rest of the career, rest of the game, rest of the season. They're, they're big moments. 
Who got more big moments? And Luka got hella big moments already. God. Some players, for whatever reason, were never able to do it consistently. Dang. Damn, Pat. Some players were truly outstanding at it. Larry Bird was the best at it. Really? That's tough. That's tough, Larry. That's tough, Larry. I'm not going to give you the stats about his field goal shooting under two minutes with a score that's this close or tell you who has the most buzzer beaters Freaking or any of that. Take that for data. I'm just going to show you clutch moments in clutch situations. 1985 against the Blazers. Bird drops 48 points, including this. Down one with two seconds left. Down one with two seconds? Oh my God. Splash. <laughs> Up fake. 1985 against the Hawks. Bird sets the Celtics scoring record with 60 points with shots like these. Damn. They open the right side. Bird the four mm. Splash. That's the best shooting I've ever seen. 1986 against the Rockets. Not all of Bird's clutch moments were singular. The bigger the moment, the bigger his performance. In game six of the oh 1986 my God, this NBA Finals, like these? Bird clinches the championship with a triple double in what he calls the best game he ever played. Two seconds on the shot. <laughs> <laughs> This dude is searching for that three-point line like he's damn like in my player career. He needs another three. Bullets. Bird Full hits one shot something. to tie it before it's waved off because of a timeout. Hits another shot to tie it up for real. Crowd is standing up. It goes now to Bird. Bird what? Goes and then in double overtime, down one, he does this. Uh, it's gonna go to Bird. He's got it. What? What is this? For three years, from 1986 to 1988, the three-point contest knew no other champion but Larry Bird. Goodness gracious. Drop one here quickly, 14. This is a tie for the money. That's iconic right there. Dude, ain't taking 1987 Eastern Conference Finals, Game 5. Tied at two games apiece against the Bad Boy Pistons, this enormous game would put the winner one game away from the NBA Finals. The Pistons are up one with seconds remaining. The ball goes out of bounds off the Celtics. Isaiah Thomas just needs to inbound the ball to win the game. <laughs> this is clutch. Bird steals it. That's clutch. That's just clutch, man. And look at the shoes he's doing it in. I got to give everybody who played it that there era just another tick. There are too many big games the shoes he big got moments on. for me to go through without this they ending got, up got as a regular shoes at this point? But that all leads me to this, Dude, what I really want to talk Converse. about. 1987, NBA Finals, Game 4 against the Lakers. LA is up two games to one, and the Celtics need to win to tie the series and stay alive. Travel. Bird hits a three with 12 seconds left to go up by two. Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't check Larry Bird. Smart move. Green comes down and gets fouled with eight seconds left. He makes the first, but misses the second. All right. Uh -oh. LA ends up with the ball with seven seconds left, down one point. Come on. Come on, Magic. Magic. this, the baby skyhook. Game. Damn. Two seconds left. Down one. Okay, Lay. Bird fires it. What do you think happens? What did happen though? Wait, did he make that? But his foot was on the line. Ooh. I bet it wasn't that. When I paused the tape right. and the ball was hanging in the air, you You're thought right. it was going in. Bird thought it was going in. Magic thought it was going in. <laughs> I've seen this game before, and I still Ooh, think it's going to go okay. in. But it okay. didn't. Pat Riley said it himself. Damn. We got lucky. We got and that. A missed lucky. shot in the NBA Finals is Damn. why he's the clutchest. Because after he makes the big plays, has the big games, hits the big shots, time and time again, you expect him to hit every shot. You just to win know every going game. In. That's and in tough. those fleeting moments when he That's doesn't, tough. when he looks like a mere human, when he looks like everyone else who tries to do what he does, you just can't believe it. That's exactly what it is. You expecting that man to hit that shot. That's exactly what it is. That's what Larry Bird did. He made the big plays so often, you thought he was going to make them every time. 
He helped turn basketball into a global phenomenon, paving the way for every Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, or LeBron James who comes through our lives. He played basketball in its purest form and captained a team that is consistently ranked among the greatest of all time. He has the second highest win percentage in the history of the NBA, mm. behind Magic by less than one half of 1%, mm. about 10 games. Mm. He was the complete package, a player with no holes in his game mm. whatsoever. Mm. They called him Basketball Jesus. He didn't get that name without doing something extraordinary. He saved basketball, and he did it by playing it better than anyone else. Here's Magic at Bird's retirement in 1993. Larry Bird said that there will be another Larry Bird one day. And Larry, there will never, ever, ever be another Larry Bird. To uh, the greatest basketball player ever. You thought! But more important, a friend forever. Oh, that's tough right there. That's tough. Do we got another one now? Do we got another one? Is Luca the next Larry? What year is this? Year number three? Woo! We gonna see, man. This season's gonna be crazy.